Hey everyone, it's your moderator, Marilyn Santiago, for another wonderful Home Chef Workshop episode. And today we are going to, well, thank you for being with us. And uh, we've got an hour, a fun hour together. Um, today we're going to have a wonderful Asian theme menu featuring the carrot ginger soup, Thai beef salad, and banana fritters, something that I have always adored growing up in the Philippines. So let's go over to meet our chef. Her name is Marlene Del Rosario. She's a wonderful person who I've known for many, many years. And enjoy your cooking with her. Hi there, Marilyn. Hi, everyone. And uh, yes, welcome to Home Chef Workshop. So uh, tonight's meal is very exciting. Uh, it's a uh, I always love cooking Asian, and it's a very healthy meal. And and we actually have a dessert. Usually we don't. Uh, we you know we we try to refrain from too many sugars uh, in our uh, menus. But once in a while, it's totally fine. And today uh, we will have a complete meal of soup, uh, hearty salad, and. Uh, uh, the dessert, which is turon or banana fritters. Okay, so if you haven't yet, um, let's make sure that you remove your meat uh, and your your meat and your spring rolls from the freezer or fridge, wherever. Well, actually, fridge. Uh, the the meat shouldn't have been frozen, but we want to give it time to settle into room temperature. So if it's in the fridge, make sure it's out. And then your spring rolls, usually they're they're frozen. So we want to give it time to thaw, so take it out already, okay? Um, and while, and while you're doing that, uh, Marlene, I just want to remind everybody to, to have a pen and paper handy. If you can please write down the meeting room ID in case of any failure with your connection. It's 230-945-351. 230-945-351. Back to you. Good reminder. Um, okay, so this is how we are gonna go through the class. So first we are gonna be marinating the meat because uh, we wanna give it some time for the, for the spices, etc., cetera, to, to get into the meat before we actually cook it. And then we are going to be preparing our soup and then assembling our salad. So there's a, um, the, the way we are, uh, the way we do our classes when we're doing menus of two or three recipes, we try to plan it so that the first uh, uh, process that we do is the longest one or the ones that have to be done before anything else, okay? So uh, to marinate the meat, we are gonna be uh, kneading uh, a few things. So let's check it. We are gonna need garlic, definitely, and um, black peppercorns. If you have Pestle and mortar, this is a good time to take it out. Uh, we'll show you alternatives on how to do this. So uh, let's see, garlic, let's get our stuff. Peppercorns, um, what else? Am I missing out? I think, I think that's pretty much, that's it, right? So, oh, if you have coriander roots, which is uh, not always available, but, but uh, sometimes your market carries them. Uh, it would be good to use that. That's, that's something that's typically used in Thai cooking. Uh, you crush the, the roots of the um, uh, cilantro. Um, did I say garlic? I'm sorry if I said garlic, but I meant cilantro. <laughs> so it's optional. It's optional in this uh, dish, and it will have to be optional because it wasn't available in my market. So, all right, so let's get, um, let's see, I have the salt. Well, peppercorns. Yes, and very corn. authentic. You know, I live in Asia, here in Hong Kong. We love the Thai curry. Well, I think it's a global love, really. But uh, but using the roots is a very authentic uh, technique in making the curry paste. Yes, that's true. And you know, actually, cilantro is one of those vegetables where you can eat everything. And and I actually. Um, well, I only discard the, the, the ends of it, which look like it's, you know, been in soil and all that, if it's really too dirty. But otherwise, 
Um, I use it because every part of the cilantro has amazing flavors. Okay, so here I have my four uh, cloves of garlic. Um, if you are not familiar with a pestle and mortar, I will just demonstrate that what you do is to crack open the skin, you just like give it a pounce, and it's uh, very similar to when you crack it with the back of your knife. So I'm just gonna show you, you just do this, and then you see, it cracks the skin, and then after that, we're gonna be pounding it with stuff, okay? But, so let's do this for the four cloves of garlic. And if you don't have a pestle and mortar, uh, here's just how you do it with a, with a flat part of your knife. You just basically slam it that way. Well, not, not really slam, but gently <laughs> knock it down and crush it. And um, obviously that was too gentle. So let's try it again. Whoa, okay, there we go. Why I like the pestle and mortar more. It's also very cool looking, but okay, do that for all four. Oops, jumping, jumping. Ah, and they're still jumping, but okay. So this is, this is gonna be for a marinade. So you don't have to be a stickler and remove every uh, blemish, etc. because you don't, you're not really gonna be cooking this into any sauce. Uh, most of this will disappear when you when you cook the steak. So, all right. So, da -da 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 -da. okay. I have one, two, three, four. That's ready. Get the stuff out here. Yeah, and I just and want to say to Marlene, um, going back to your cilantro, yes, yeah. you're, you're right, the whole herb is usable, and every single part uh, uh, adds a different flavor profile. I, I notice the roots are quite, um, have a slight bitterness to them. I think that's very important in, in an authentic paste. Um, yes, that's true. Um, yeah, you know, but it's also uh, so saying, if you don't have it, it's not gonna kill the taste, but really no, authentic, add it, add it when you can. Every little layer helps. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our uh, oil as well. And the oil, we always use um, either olive oil, avocado oil, or coconut oil. And in this case, um, uh, avocado oil is what I'm gonna be using, okay? Uh, olive oil, we use generally when, when we cook stuff that's, um, well, for, aside from dressings, when we cook items that, that require low heat oil because it can't take high temperatures. Okay, so let's just pour a little bit straight into the pestle and mortar. And it's a um, mild oil, isn't it? So it doesn't, uh, it, it doesn't detract from, it doesn't add its own flavor to the, to the curry. Yes, it's a bit, yeah, it's a neutral oil. Oh, okay, so what I'm doing, I'm crushing it straight in the pestle and mortar. Now, if you don't have the pestle and mortar, what you can just do is um, basically chop or mince the garlic, and then uh, we'll mix it as in a little bowl, and it will that will be sufficient. But I like the pestle and mortar because you're able to grind a lot uh, more thoroughly than if you didn't have one. Um, you can, if you want to, it's not called for in the recipe, but if you wanted to make it more of a paste, you could also add a little bit of salt, which, which acts as an abrasive element. Um, no, not necessarily, but watch this. I'm going to do it anyway, just for fun. Okay. So that's pretty much it, uh, for the marinade. And I'm just going to use the same container. Why wash another one? Um, I think I'm going to put a little bit more oil in this just to make sure it's really nicely coated. And all right, and then transfer that into the container. And then we're going to massage it in. And then we're just going to like let that rest. So I'm going to have to wash this now. I just want to give yes. you a clear warning that we've lost your stove camera. Okay, thank you. Uh, let me, let me, let me uh, massage this in first, and then I will take care of the stove camera. Yeah, I can see that it's, it's now black. 
the screen. So this is interesting, you know, when we're on live, uh, when we do live shows, which is, which is like this show, you never know what will happen. So we have to always be prepared and go with the flow and not panic because there's always a way. <laughs> okay, look at that. Pretty much nicely marinated. We'll just let that uh, sit and, and go into room temperature further because this is one of the last things we're gonna be cooking. Wash your hands, everyone. You're handling raw meat. So, so at this point, sure. we're 15 minutes into the class. You don't have to take anything. Right. So at this point, we're 15 minutes into the class, everyone. And as Marlene said, you should be marinating your beef. It's going to be sitting there for a few minutes uh, before she cooks it. And uh, you can choose to do that um, in the refrigerator or outside, but preferably outside, right, Marlene? So it stays at room temperature before cooking. Yes. Okay, now this is interesting because my stove, my laptop just died on me again. Oh. Well, that's what? okay. We have so many cameras at Home Chef Workshop. Okay, yeah, I will, we will, we will just like use uh, different cameras when the time comes. Okay, that's so right. now that we're, we're done with the marinating of the uh, meat, let's work on the soup. So we're going to need the onion, we're going to need ginger. Make sure you have your ginger. Um, here we only need, uh, let's see, I'm looking at one inch of ginger and then pretty much a medium onion. I have a large onion here, so I'm just gonna large. use maybe of this, okay? And while this is cooking, we'll be doing the rest of the prep for, for our, um, for our nice, so uh, you may want to have some goggles while you're doing this. <laughs> uh, what? I said some of you may want to wear some goggles while doing this. <laughs> Why? Oh, are, are things flying around? The onions. me going? The onions. Oh, that's right. Okay. I, you know, I don't cry as often as some people do with onions, but I don't think that's because of me. I think that has to do with the... Uh, uh, kinds of onions that's available, but I, I think I'm, I'm guessing because I do come across some onions where I cannot help it. I have to cry, but in this case, no, not so much. Uh, by the way, what I'm just going to um, say is we're going to be uh, slicing our ginger and our onions. We don't have to make it so beautiful. We want to make it even for cooking, but we are going to be uh, pureeing this anyway. Now I'm just noticing that my onion has a little bit of some rotten, some rotten parts. So I'm just going to remove that. You don't want that obviously we, spoiling any food. those rotten parts, Marlene? Um, oh, did you see it? What does it look like, the rotten parts? Um, it looks, it's discolored. Oh. It's a little bit yellowish. Here, actually you can see the white part. That's nice. That's fresh. Yes. But that dark one, is a little bit too um, over, I, I guess it would be overripe. So I'm gonna remove that layer. And it's weird with the onions, it's sometimes the layers in between that's weird. And it's not like a whole section. So it's not like you can just slice it off. You just have to remove those parts. Now, since I removed quite a lot, I'm gonna get more from the, it was a big onion, so I'm gonna get, now more from the other to compensate for what was lost. So here we go again. I do have some, it's not very good, but look at this. Can you see um, still a little bit of rot? So I'm gonna remove that. And again, very strange. I have it in some sections, but not all. So, you know, all you do is just remove that. No, it looks like I'm using the whole onion because I have to remove all the yucky parts. All right, that's fine. And then just roughly chop, slice. And having and said that, just for everyone's knowledge, these spoilage parts of vegetables, fruits, 
and aromatics like what what Marlene is has pointed out they're not harmful to health they just you know they just I number one don't look good and also generally don't taste good so nothing nothing wrong if you happen to add them it's not going to cause any food poisoning and we explained that very well in our food hygiene video in our website www.homechefworkshop.com Okay, and then, um, so we are going to, uh, we also need our, our celery. Now it calls for one big celery, but my celery is pretty thin, see? So I'm using, I'll be using two, in, or actually I'll just use all three since I already washed it. So I'll use the three slim ones in, um, just because I don't have a big celery. You see, look, that's pretty much like one stick of a normal celery. Yes. This is organic, by the way. If you, you, you know, as much as possible, uh, try to use organic uh, when you can, but obviously there's a little bit of a price difference with organic. So if that's the case, you can pick and choose what, what's organic. There are certain vegetables that you need to have organic because they are just more, uh, more prone to having pesticides. Celery is one of them, okay? so. If you have to choose what's going to be organic, this has to be one of them. All right, so we are going to be slicing um, this as well, and then we're going to be preparing our carrots. But since our onions and our ginger are already done, our ginger seems to have shrunk. That's so weird. Let's just do another one here. It's about <laughs> an inch worth, but seems to have disappeared. So turn on the heat of your uh, stove. For the stock pot and we are gonna put some of our avocado oil about two tablespoons basically to coat the to coat the stock pan and then let me check one more time with their laptop to see what's happening there but as Marilyn said if it doesn't work out we'll have a plan B I want it Yes, so uh, everyone, we're just about ready to go to our soup. So I hope you're following along. It looks, it's looking good for everyone out here, Marlene. Uh, okay, getting some thumbs up. I am slicing the, the celery and again, just evenly, maybe half an inch long. I'm even including the leaves. Why not? It's all going to be pureed. And we're going to put all of this in. In fact, we can do it now. We don't have to wait for the pot to be really, really hot because I want to clear my um, my uh, cutting board so we can put other things in it. So I'm, uh, I will show you this. Just put it put it in your stock pot, and I'm going to show you what it looks like. I'll use another camera a little bit later on. Okay. So right now, that's all there is to it, and. Oh, I'm hearing some sizzles. Actually, I'm gonna show you. So here, if you wanna look at the prep camera, I'm using the prep to it make sure. It works very well. Okay, you need to, okay, there you go. Okay, so, um, all right. I'm, I'm, <laughs> it's hard to kind of gauge which, there, okay? But basically, you're seeing what it would look like. And the fire here is medium high. And I'll let me show you what medium high looks like. That's pretty yeah. much medium high. Okay, so we are sauteing, and sauteing is uh, basically to release all the beautiful oils and to help um, to help draw out the moisture. Um, just add some salt, you know, just maybe a pinch or two of salt. Okay, and so that's happening. Let's work on our carrots because that's gonna go in in short order. Now we were saying six to eight medium carrots for some reason. All the things I have today are pretty small, like uh, unusually small. So I hope that's what the earth throws up and just as home. Exactly. You know, so, we have to adjust every single moment. Yeah, so all we do is because it was about six to eight uh, carrots, medium carrots or a pound. So I'm just gonna use maybe uh, this much, it's about a pound as well. Four, eight, about 10 slim ones, okay? And these are organic carrots, and we like to use organic carrots because uh, I, I like 
to use the, the skin. Like I don't want to peel this as much as possible. If there are blemishes, we will um, peel it, but all the nutrients are actually contained in the skin. So as much as possible, I keep it, which is why I like organic characters. Okay, so all we're gonna do, chop off the ends, and then maybe even some of the tips if it's, if it's really, uh, you know, dirty or strange looking. Uh, well, actually strange looking is fine, but if it's dirty or rotting, of course you have to remove those. And then again, we will slice it just evenly. We are gonna puree this, but the smaller you chop this, the faster it will cook, okay? So here goes, just slice away. I love the kinks in the carrots you've got, Marlene. I'm sorry, the what? I love the kinks you've got in these carrots. The, the kinks? Yeah, the kinks. There are some oh. bends and... <laughs> oh yeah, because they're shaped funny. Okay, you know, yeah, that's right. Let's talk about that. Real food. I know. Come perfectly shaped. Absolutely. And, and in fact, the beauty is having, having everything look very different. Look at that. It looks <laughs> like a twisted leg. Exactly. And, and you, you like that because um, when it's so perfectly formed, you know that the company was trying to fit it in some commercial packaging. And so they had to make it all a certain size. And you know, to achieve something like that, that means they're, they're manipulating all sorts of things like genetically or, um, or they're wasting a lot of beautiful oh, vegetables beautiful that ones, yeah. otherwise could have been eaten, you see? So That's right. in fact, there is, a, um, there is a site, I can't remember, I think it's Ugly Food, it's a movement, Ugly Food. And, and what they do is um, they, they're trying to promote uh, buying foods that look weird in terms of like they're misshaped or, yeah. or, you know, not that they have blemishes, but they're perfectly good, but they're rejected by supermarkets because they have maybe slight blemishes or they're not conforming to the ideal picture of what, let's say, a tomato should look like. And so <laughs> really embrace the difference. Yes. Okay. So all I'm doing, I, it's no rhyme or reason, I'm just um, slicing them in fairly even uh, chunks. Okay. So everyone notices the chopping method that Marlene is using. Uh, although these are very hard vegetables uh, because they're not cooked, she's using a, a tap chop method. Yeah. For, and it's very loud. I can't here because I'm hearing the sizzling onions. By the way, we shouldn't forget to stir that. So we are going to do that. And you see my carrots are kind of rolling all over the place. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not very good. All right, so let's just um, check on our, uh, let's use a wooden spoon for this. Let's just stir the onions in. And guess what? We'll just drop our carrots as well in and let that, Okay, <laughs> this is gonna be interesting. I'm, do I'm doing it like one by one like this because they're rolling all over my cutting board. <laughs> okay. I love see that you're using this. skin for ah, this. See. Okay, I wish you could see this. Uh, I, you know, you, we can see this. Watch this. Da -da 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 -da. I'm, oh. oh no, I lost one, oops. Okay, don't do this at home. I'm losing too many of them. That wasn't very smart, really. Okay, I actually just lost three. And you know what? I have tongs, I'm gonna fish them out. So, boom, this is on my oven. All right, all I we're doing. I have a flexi chopping board at home, which uh, is a good idea. I, said, I suppose somebody figured out that they want less of these rolling vegetables off their chopping board so you can flex it so it creates kind of like a, a spoon oh yes that's right it becomes like a funnel yes yes okay all we're doing is uh we are building a little bit of flavor when we are when, when we need to pay the the aromatics aromatics meaning your onions your celery you know ginger can be considered one 
Um, also, the carrots, we are actually building more flavor when you, when you brown it a little bit, okay? So that's, that's the reason for this particular process. And then we are gonna add our stock. So you can use uh, chicken or vegetable stock, again, organic. Um, basically, this is 32 ounces. That's what we're gonna use. But instead of using the whole thing, what I always uh, like to say is, you know, use um, maybe half of it because we're gonna be pureeing this in the blender. We don't wanna overfill it. And then later on, when, when we are checking the, uh, the soup, we just wanna make sure that the texture is what we like because we can always add more if it's too thick. Um, and it's a, it's a little bit, it's actually easier if it's too thick to thin it down rather than if it's too thin. And then you have to go through the process of um, adding more stuff that you can puree. So it just, it's just a little bit more work, okay? So uh, soup is pretty much, I mean, not the soup, it's not just soup because there's no liquid, but the carrots and all the beautiful things in it are pretty much ready. So we're bathed ready. in chicken we're stock. We're so, making the time here, everyone. Go all ahead. right, so we're gonna put, I'm just gonna show you. I know you're seeing only the top, but ba -ba! I'm just putting enough to cover um, all the vegetables because we're cooking it further, but I don't wanna, as I said, I don't wanna use up the whole stock because we wanna make sure that the texture is fine. So just leave that cooking. We wanna soften it a bit before we put in the puree, okay? Before we put it in the blender. So now we're gonna just work on um, everything that goes into our salad. So let's make sure we have, let's put this aside. And we're making good time because we're halfway into the class. So the soup is now already happening. Boil, yeah. And our marination is happening. That's wonderful. So now we're good. gonna have the salad. Great. Okay. Now a lot of Asian cooking is assembly. There's a lot of little little steps and a lot of little things you have to do, but in the end, it's assembly. So, so in this case, our Thai beef salad, uh, what we did was, um, well, we already marinated the steak. The steak is gonna be the last thing, one of the last things we're gonna do because we want to serve the salad warm with steak that's like, ooh, still nice and moist. Um, so we are just basically assembling the salad and we are also gonna make the, 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 the dressing for the salad. Now, what I have here, I have a bunch of greens. Um, actually, let me show you my listen class. Well, I'll bring it here. I have as a base, you can use any soft lettuce. I'm using Boston lettuce because I'm in Boston. Uh -huh, uh -huh. No, actually I'm a little bit outside of Boston. But anyway, you can use any, <laughs> any lettuce that you want. And actually um, in the recipe, we are asking for uh, cilantro. Cilantro is very Asian. So, this is a flavor profile that you really want to add and it's hard to substitute this. So as much as possible, uh, have this and thank goodness this is fairly common in all markets, okay? But lettuce, any kind of lettuce. Um, and, and let me add, not to mistake it with parsley, flat leaf parsley. Oh, ah, yeah, totally different. The flavor profile is different. And there are a few people who are genetically, uh, oops, genetically uh, unable to eat cilantro or to enjoy it because it tastes like soap and that's not because they're being hoity-toity it's because genetically they are really tasting cilantro as a soap so really? weird yeah. yeah okay so i'll tell you what we're going to be doing with these things um so a lot of the vegetables we are just going to be assembling in layers um i also have basil it's not in the in 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 our recipe but you know, Thai beef salad, or, or actually most any salad, you can just use whatever greens you want. But the Asian profile usually has mint, cilantro, and um, because I didn't have as much mint as I would like, uh, basil is a good thing to add. So, you know, you can mix and match, have fun. Uh, I have cherry tomatoes, just because they look beautiful. We are gonna be slicing this in half, uh, lengthwise okay in fact maybe we should do that now um, and then after that or actually let's do this the dressing first 
and then we will work on that because I will get what you know tomatoes are so juicy that's gonna I'm gonna have a lot of liquid here so we don't want that so at this point just get a bowl we're gonna make the dressing and you will need your lime you will need your fish sauce and soy sauce so um, I like to use I'm of course covering all sorts of things here let, let me move my leaves back out okay so I like to use this I got it at a at a consignment shop or you know it's like all those antique shops they go for cheap but they're so they're so practical so let's just go for that that's um what do you call that a lemon a lemon juicer the manual way of juicing them right. so let's see what we need we need three tablespoons lime juice three tablespoons of fish sauce a little brown sugar okay let's see uh, uh, uh. okay let's get a tablespoon and see if that's three tablespoons all right one. You have a very juicy lime there. Yeah. So you're not yeah. using a measuring tablespoon. You're just using a a, a just normal a tablespoon. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's not like baking where you have to be super precise. Um, cooking, you know, a little bit here, um, a little bit um, of imprecision. Imprecision. Is there such a word? Yes. It's totally fine. Okay, one tablespoon of, I'm using tamari. For those of you who are gluten intolerant, this is a soy sauce that doesn't contain gluten, okay? But obviously, other soy sauces, any other soy sauce can, use, can be used. I'm using also uh, a really high quality fish sauce. And I just have to talk about this, this um, particular fish sauce, it's, you know, I just realized, uh, Marilyn, can we have a bit of frontal? Yes. Um, so I went to Vietnam a few years ago, took a cooking class, and we tried this fish sauce, and I'm, I was like floored. I've always grown up with, I've grown up with fish sauce. I've known different kinds of fish sauce, but this was particularly spectacular. It was very mellow. And it turns out that um, Vietnam makes the best, for me, makes the best fish sauce in the world. And it's particular to an island called Phu Quoc, and it's pure. It's the only fish sauce that doesn't have additives like sugar or anything. It's just basically fish and salt. Let me look at the ingredients. Fish, it's anchovy and sea salt. And the liquid is basically pure fish and salt. That's, that's it. They don't add water or anything. Okay, it's so dark. It's, it's amazing. quite dark, isn't it? It's quite what? Dark. Um, this, this maybe, I, I don't know if it's unusually dark for you. It looks a little bit, it looks kind of normal to me, but, um, but the flavor profile, oh, there, was, there was a reason I mentioned this. The flavor profile of this particular fish sauce is, it's a lot milder. You can actually sip this without cringing. Other fish sauce, you're going to squint because it's so salty. This one is not, which is why. Um, I'm calling for, let's say, three tablespoons of this. So you might want to check if you're using another kind of fish sauce. Before putting three tablespoons, you might want to try maybe uh, one or two and then see whether it's too strong for you because, uh, again, it will vary. Okay, that's pretty much it for our sauce. The other thing you can do, if it's too salty, you can always dilute with more with a little bit of water. In fact, um, well, let's taste this and see, but it should be fine. I'm expecting it should be very strong, right? Yeah, oh, it's nice because lime is an amazing combination with fish sauce. Okay, that's actually beautiful. Um, and now let's see. Let's not forget, so we are gonna do carrots, uh, not carrots, uh, tomatoes and cucumber. So let's get that. Now we have a question. Is, is it all right to take a question? Yes, oh, by the way, before I take the question, um, ch chili peppers, optional, uh, authentic Thai is 
really spicy. I kind of like a little bit of spice. So you can add or not add any chili peppers. And yes, I'll take the question. Well, about the taste of this, of this uh, dressing that we're doing, the, the question is whether it's supposed to be a very strong flavor profile or are they supposed to be making okay. sure that it's a- That's, that's a good question because Oh, sorry, I didn't catch the last one. Or, or it should be a mild blend of, of flavors, of the balance oh. of flavors. Okay, the flavor profile, um, you're, it's going to be balanced with the lime fish sauce. And the lime, lime is the lemony tart um, flavor profile, uh, which is sort of, uh, it sort of balances out the, the, the saltiness of both the fish sauce and the soy sauce. Oh my God. I'm glad you asked that because I almost forgot the other element that will balance this out is brown sugar. So let's <laughs> put in two and a half teaspoons of brown sugar. Yes, because uh, what's so interesting about a lot of the sauces in Thai and in Vietnam is it's the balance of sweet, sour, and salty. So here we go. We, we already talked about the sour, which was the lime, the salty, which is both fish sauce and soy sauce. And now we're talking about the sweet, which is the sugar, right? So just add, did we say, we said two and a half teaspoons. So boom, that's all there is to it. Mix, mix, mix. And now that really is officially ready. Uh, at this point, the soup, we can turn off the heat, we'll let it cool because we want to make sure um, it's not too hot for our blender. So, so um, just turn off the heat and then we will puree that. Okay, I'm just gonna taste this one more time just to check now that we have the sugar. It was already good. All right, this is, it's a beautiful flavor profile, but a little bit strong. So as I said, um, you can always dilute a little bit. This is going to be your dressing. So this goes directly on your meats. But this is the only flavor flavoring for your whole salad. So you don't want it to be too um, diluted that there's no flavor that comes out. Okay, so like what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add maybe maybe half a teaspoon of water. That, that little, okay? Okay, so... A uh, or one teaspoon. Okay, done. So now let's let's prepare our tomatoes. Just slice them um, pretty much uh, lengthwise. And, um, you know, again, a lot of these things are optional. I like the tomatoes because, especially the cherry tomatoes, because they're very cute and they're colorful. So maybe we can always the, remove the tongs, Marlene. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's always nice to see, to have colors like that. And the quantity, um, we did say uh, eight ounces, which is half a pound, but this is all up to you. You know, it's what, what we want to do is introduce you to what kind of flavor profiles mix together, like the flavor profile of the tomatoes with the cucumber, with the different kinds of leaves, but um, a lot of this is also because of aesthetics. So if you want to make it less than eight ounces, not a problem, okay? So maybe we'll just do that. That's enough and let's move, let's transfer that to a little bowl because then we are gonna uh, peel our cucumber and slice that. So. That looks nice. All right, that's ready. Now, so get your cucumber, we are. So this is what Marlene has been talking about, that Asian cooking is preparation heavy and um, cooking light or uh, assembly light. So it's all, about, it's all about preparation in Asian cooking. Yes. Okay. Um, there are two things that we're gonna do that I, well, one thing I forgot, so I'm gonna 
talk about that. But first, we're just peeling the cucumber, and then we're going to slice this. But the other thing is our uh, cumin. Uh, the cumin goes into the into the carrot soup. Uh, this I tend to like uh, cooking spices, and and it it just is usually uh, the case that you release more flavors when you cook certain spices. And and actually, let me backtrack. Not all spices will probably react the same way, but but the spices that you use for Indian cooking, cumin, uh, even black pepper, uh, cardamom, uh, those cloves, uh, it benefits from cooking first in oil and releasing extra flavors. But in other kinds of cooking, that's not usually the method. So it, you can do it either way, okay? So although I tend to like um, adding the cumin when we're sauteing, it's still fine to do it now. So let's go ahead and add the cumin to the carrot soup. And we said that would be about um, one half teaspoon. Okay, so let's do that. Cumin is one of those spices that I actually really like the flavor profile. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, start up with a half teaspoon. And if you like it, fine, and you can always add, okay? So, there we go. So soup is cooling. I'm just giving it a little stir. And I love cumin peeling. too. It has a, such an yeah, nice earthy it's, flavor. It's such a what? Earthy flavor. Yeah, I was, I was trying to think, like, how do you describe uh, cumin? It's earthy, but, but it, has, it has its own saltiness too. Have it, haven't you noticed? Yes, that's true. It's a, you're right. It's a very complex flavor to describe. Mm -hmm. And once you, and, and I think it's a bit of an acquired taste. Is it really? It was I love the first taste with life and cumin. Okay. Um, we can continue that, but I, and I, we can take questions, but I'm just making sure everyone's with that's me. That's okay. I'm just chit-chatting. Okay, no, no, that's great. Uh, we're going to slice the cucumber. Now, this one, it matters how you slice this because you're going to see this. We're not pureeing this. So I'm going to slice it about, let's see, that would be uh, about three, well, slim, no? So maybe about three millimeters. Let me, let me slice a few and then you can see because it's kind of nice to have this here. Can you see? About like that. That's okay. about yep. three millimeters. Okay, Very so just go ahead and slice it out. You don't want it too thick. In salads, I kind of like like slivered um, cucumber. And cucumber is really good as, because it's a cooling vegetable. So especially when you put some spices, like some chili peppers, which I actually did. Um, I put a little bit of chili pepper flakes in the, in the dressing. Uh, the heat of that is counteracted by the coolness of the cucumber. Okay, so. Okay, Marla, I'm just gonna slice. Just, uh, to give you a 15 minute, last 15 minute warning on our uh -oh. Yikes, okay, oops, might be a bit behind then. So let's, um, so let's take the soup out and let's prepare. Oh, there are two things that we're gonna do that I forgot to run too. Okay, so let's assemble the salad. And what we're going to do is, um, well, let's cook the steak. Oops, sorry. Let's cook the steak while we're assembling the salad. So uh, we are going to sear the meat. So turn on the heat to high for your, for your, um, um, in your skillet. And then put in your olive oil. Not olive oil. I'm so sorry. Avocado oil. Remember, <laughs> olive oil is not for high heat, but uh, avocado and coconut oil good for high heat and we are recommending these particular oils because these are very healthy for you okay about two tablespoons and meanwhile i am going to start plating one one salad okay the thing is this recipe the thai salad is uh, the thai beef salad is for about four people but it really it's just my husband and myself so i'm just going to plate for for one to show you. And I don't like in general putting dressing on the whole salad and then no one's gonna eat it because it will 
it will cause the vegetables to, to wilt. So I'm just gonna plate for one, just so you can idea on how to layer. So we're starting off with the big pieces like the lettuce. You can tear it up a little bit so that they're a little bit more bite size. And then just, um, since this is your main meal, just uh, put it as a first layer. And then this can be followed by your basil and your mint. So just the basil, they're small enough that you can just like add that. You know, I'm gonna be more generous because this is the main meal, so just do that. And then um, your mint and your cilantro. So your mint, if, if they are, let's, let me see. Okay, if you have thick stalks, don't, don't really, you wanna just remove the leaves. Um, but some of them are thin, so I'm just putting the whole stem in, that's fine. Okay, so we're assembling. So if you notice, I'm starting with the with some of the greens, um, and I will definitely end it with the tomatoes and the beef and the cucumber. Okay, but we're just doing that. Okay, your cilantro. Oh yeah, we want our cilantro. So just tear it straight into the plate. Okay. And, and then, I remember someone telling me that tearing is uh, uh, does not does not make the herb watery like chopping wood. Oh, really? Interesting. Well, if you over okay, chop I... the herbs, it becomes too watery. Ah, got it. Okay, I'm only going to finish it until the cucumber stage. So let me just show you. Um, you can see that you have just these guys on top. What's going to happen is when the meat is finished, we're going to put the strips of meat and the tomatoes on top. Okay, so... Uh, there is something I forgot, the scallions, but it's not too late. Let's get some of our scallions and chop it, and we're going to add it too. So, mm, nice yes. onion flavor yeah. there. Yeah, so our steak, oh, it looks like it's ready. Okay, You're, you know your oil is hot. Let me just show you, everyone. When it's a little bit too hot, it's a bit smoking, I'm on the... On, I'm on my prep camera, oh, Marilyn. Yes, yes, sorry, sorry. Um, okay. Um, it, it's a little bit smoking, so that's a bit too hot. Uh, so I just lowered the heat a little bit. Can you see it? Yes, does yes. It look like, does, does it look like it's smoking? Yes, yes, it, I, we can see it. I, I think okay. it's a very important point to make to everyone, Marlene. Very important right. point. Good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I'll get the meat and I'm, we're going to put it in and uh, I'm not going to use my hands. I'm going to use the tongue and that's fine. And let's turn on a little bit of the, the vent. Okay, here goes. Wow. Can you hear? Yes. All right. We're just going to cook it on either side for about four minutes. So in the meantime, Continue slicing your scallions. Okay, just adjust your camera so we see the whole prep. Yeah, oh, sorry. Okay. Wow, we are having technical difficulties today, aren't we? <laughs> but, okay. but won't affect oh. our finished product, I'm sure. Yeah, so I'm slicing just in little pieces. We're going to be using... Um, well, we're going to be chopping basically six of these for the four people, like because the menu is for four. But since I'm not, uh, I'm not cooking for that many people right now, I'll just slice these three because these will go both on our salad and as a garnish in our carrot soup. So, There's just something sticking in front of the prep camera, Marlene. You can just... The tongue again. The, tongue. <laughs> the offensive little tongs. Okay. So I have our scallions. I'm just going to add it here. Oh, see how easy that is. Lovely. Lovely. There, okay. And wait till you see this afterwards. Okay. So that's waiting for the steak. 
So in the meantime, our soup is ready to be pureed. So let's start putting it into our blender. So, ah. Okay, we have five minutes to the end of this class, uh, everyone. But if I can, if I can beg your your indulgence for perhaps another five or ten minutes more, so we can get all the way to the plating. Yes. Oh my God! And I haven't done the the turon yet, but the turon's actually easy. So just the... pour everything into your blender. All the nice juicy stuff. I'm hearing some popping in our steak, so. And this is a great perspective that everyone has on on doing a few recipes at the same time and getting dinner or lunch ready for yourself or your family, and. <coughs> everyone a great flavor of, of you know the sometimes frenetic activity that we can, we can experience in the kitchen. Time to blend. <laughs> okay, I just blended it out of the camera, so. No, it's okay. talking as I don't want to com be competing with a blender in the background. Yeah, but exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I've just put the I've just put the, the the soup in here in the stock the the puree is already in here. Um, and then I'm just going to add a little bit of milk. This is just to make it creamier. So uh, the recipe called for, I'm just going to, uh, I'm, I'm going to wing it, but officially it's one third cup. Obviously you can add more if you, if you want to put more later on, but let's start with one third. That should be fine. Now, here, I don't know if you can see this, but that's a little bit too thick for me. And that's fine because we only put half of our stock. So I'm going to put a few more and then we're going to put this back on the stove to simmer so that it'll be ready. And there we go. Looks like that's a nicer. And remember, you can adjust, you can spin it, especially if it's summer. Okay, so now that's going to go back to be heated. And let's turn over our steak because we want about maybe four minutes per side. Let me show you that. Here's the prep camera. Prep camera. Oh. Some brown in there. We could yeah. have actually make it brown more, but you know what? We can do it on the other side. Not a problem. We want this medium rare, so we want it uh, dark um, and browns on the either side and a little bit uh, pink on the inside, okay? So that's what we're going for. And I'll put back this camera. We are going to um, see the soup. Oh, Turon. Okay, we have time for the Turon. Here we go. This is really fast. So what we are going to do, I'm just going to get another cutting board. So we've got the steak, Marley, uh, on medium high right now? Uh, yes, it's on medium high because it's on the other side. I, I right. did the other side of the yes. meat. So we're and then doing what, the what's going to happen is we're going to remove that soon, and then we're going we're gonna to sense it. What that means is we're going to put it on a plate, and we're going to cover it with foil, allow the juices to settle, okay, before you press into it. So prepare your plate. Okay, our two rods. So now let's get our... Oh, these spring are roll. spring roll wrappers, yes. Spring roll wrappers. And get your bananas out. All right. So Marlene has thawed that. That's why it's separating from each other quite well. 
Okay, get your skillet also because we are gonna. And now everyone, while Marlene is getting her skillet, in, in Asia, we like to make this particular dish with what we call plant, the really fat, stubby cooking bananas, as opposed to these long bananas. But plantains are not so readily available in Western regions or, 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 or the region of Americas, uh, North America and so forth. This, these, these bananas she's showing on the screen, are but the plantains, have are stand cooking very very well and so they have a nice bite even after they're cooked by the way um i'm thinking the meat is ready so at this point let's just remove it transfer it to a plate and then we'll cover it with aluminum foil and allow it to rest okay so if your meat is not done keep going just um Yeah, this is done. I'm gonna put some of that. Okay, and then we're gonna allow it, to, we're gonna tent it. Now, what does that mean? That means I'm just gonna get some aluminum foil. So this is gonna keep So you want, you, you basically want to allow meat to rest. You see, there's still some blood. That's good, the juices are there. Yeah. Actually, I don't, it's a thin, you see, this is a thin cut. This is a flank steak, which is why you don't want to cook it too long. Um, I would have preferred a little bit more browning, but um, let's see. But let's see, let's see. Yeah, but you know what? This is fairly cooked, I can see. So we'll just leave it be. But if you, uh, that would, the browning would be if you seared it even higher, in, on higher heat. And I did not do that. Next time, I will do it even higher. Well, could it be, Marlene, that um, we, uh, it, if we patted it dry, it would have browned? Did we pat it dry? Actually, I did earlier, and okay. I did not mention that to you guys, but yes, that was a very dried out. I had dried it out earlier in our prep. Okay, so what we're doing, we're just um, slicing the bananas. And you will probably just use less than one for, for one. But I just want to show you how this looks. Okay, we'll just wrap a few because this is super duper easy. It's easy and it's lovely, everyone. Yeah, it's easy. It's going to get people like, whoa, wondering how you did that. Yes. So all you I'm do is just so excited, Marlene, that you're showing this from childhood. <laughs> yes. Now, the only other thing you need brown sugar just a little bit of it so boom 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 okay that was like a, maybe less than half a tea one fourth of a teaspoon now how to wrap okay the only problem is my camera doesn't show you so well but first you get the end of this this pointy part the diamond side you roll it over this way and then the sides you tuck it in this way boom 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 right and then make sure you're, you keep it firm, not, not too loose, and then roll it in. And I forgot, you're supposed to have a little bit of water, so get a ramekin, put water in it. So even if it's uh, cracking, don't worry. To, to seal, to seal the, the wrapper, you wanna put some water like this, just with your finger, wrap it, and then on, done. Do you see how easy that was? So, let's do um, maybe, let's, let's just do we'll two. Do another practice, yes. Yeah, okay, so slice the banana. And really, you wanna use, especially if you have bananas that are gonna be super, over, you know, overripe, use it, it's perfect. Okay, and oh. by the way, you can return your spring roll wrappers in the freezer after this, that is totally fine. Okay, so here we go again. Take two bananas. You can make this as fat or as thin as you want. And then we want a little bit, about one fourth, one fourth to one half sugar, like that. Roll again from this end. I'm gonna remove this so you can see. Boom, 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 boom. 
Tuck the sides. Make sure you're holding on to it. Dip your finger in water. And voila. Okay? That's ready. We're going to cook it now. Turn on really good. to medium heat your skillet. And we are going to use, because this time, coconut oil is going to be perfect for this because the flavor profile is good. So Banana this, and coconut, of course. Yes. And while we're waiting for that to oil, let's finish plating everything. Okay, yes. so. Okay. Based on our new estimated time of departure. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah. By the way, this Here is the time you want to season your, your uh, soup, salt and pepper. Okay, so taste it, everyone. Um, no camera. Let me actually, I'm gonna bring my iPhone and then you can see. So let's see. Oh, that looks oh my god, that's pretty good. Mm. Just a little bit of salt, and I'm gonna have to put down the phone because I need to put pepper, and then that's pretty much it. Okay, so the soup is done. So the carrot soup looks really smooth and silky. Just yes. like how you all should pour it should all be looking like. So let me let me serve the soup. Uh, let's plate the soup. Okay, so you're gonna see it one by one. And here you can actually just um, garnish it with some of that scallions that we chopped up earlier. So you can, let's you can garnish with peanuts too. Okay, so let me show you, give you an overhead shot of what this would look like. There's okay. our, oops, let's see. There's our soup. Okay, so that's ready to go. Now, now let's do our salad while we're waiting for our dessert. So it's nice, even, even just for a simple ladling of soup, Marlene takes the time to still put some garnish. Uh, you can also put a little bit of uh, drizzle of cream or a little bit of drizzle uh, olive oil or avocado oil. Um, oh, and you know what? I'm looking at the meat. It's actually a little bit too pink for what I want. So I'm going to adjust that. So again, better if it's uh, undercooked rather than overcooked. Marlene, so we're just I just put back your skillet, can and we, then we're gonna. Can we see what you were looking at the pinkiness? Do you see it? I'm gonna show you. Can we see it? Um, so everybody see. knows. Actually, let me do an overhead. Perhaps that's better. Okay, so. Looking at this view, let's see. Oh, yes, there. yes, yes. Now, you see that? Yes. It's a little bit bloody. Okay. Now, some people actually like it like that. Right, right. I don't. Yes. But you're, the perfect thing to do is to make it medium. So right. I'm going to sear this a little bit more, OK? Right. And good. We're going to do our two runs while we do that. You see how Marlene is adjusting for some problem moments uh, in, in the cooking. And this is always going to happen. So, you know, it, it, don't beat yourself up over not getting something perfectly right <laughs> according to a recipe or according to the time required. Just adjust. Okay, here we go. We're going to put our turons. I have my prep camera on. Okay, we are going to put, we're just going to do two for now because we're only two. Okay, one, two. And you're going to cook this until it's golden brown uh, all over. So you're going to be, you know, I don't like to waste oil. So I did, I'm not deep frying this. So it's not, the oil is only uh, maybe, uh, just surface okay it's not a deep fry would mean you're you're submerging this in oil but this is not so we're going to just make sure it's golden brown all over by turning it around every so often okay so that's happening and since we're just waiting 
any other questions you want to ask uh, anyone uh, we can yes it. one of the questions is the 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 participants really like this idea of wrapping the banana in a spring roll wrapper is there any other fruit that you think might work with it any other fruit yes you can actually substitute any fruit you use mango oh um, yes. peaches. they would all be pretty amazing you know so, so it's like a, a little crispy fruit pocket yes in fact um actually i'm i it's optional but i'm going to show you how to dress it let me just show you how the the turon or the banana fritters look when it's a little bit brownish so do you see Oh yes. So we want we want to pretty much make it brown all over. So we're just turning it around, see? Just like that. So okay, so just make sure it's brown all over. Oops. Okay, and let's check on our meat. Aha, uh -huh. that's getting brown. A good time to have the vent on because it's like smoking. Yeah, here. well, right. you can't see the smoke from here. You're still looking pretty clear. <laughs> okay, good. But it's smoking here and it's sizzling like mad. So it's kind of crazy. We've, so, got some, we've got some hungry stomachs. Stay with us, everyone. We just have a few yeah. minutes before Marlene has already plated our salad. What she's doing is just re-searing the, the meat so it can, can get a deeper golden brown and also cook a little bit more inside. And actually, I think it's done now. So I actually just turned off the heat and now I'm translating it into the plate. And it's cool because now you can see it's more it's Oh more yes. brown. Oh, yes. It's actually beautiful. Okay, so now we're going to get that a little bit more and then let's deal with our turon. And I think I'm using a different song. Oops. Sorry, let's move this as well. So the other way, everyone, what, what Marlene has done is she's tinted the beef so that we, we retain the heat. And the other method you could do is just turn your oven heat on very low, like 60 degrees Celsius or roughly 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And that should also do the trick. All right, our turrets are done. Ooh. Um, if you make this ahead of time, you can always reheat later, okay? But what we're gonna do is you put it on a paper towel like this, so you because you drain. wanna drain the excess oil. And then this is actually ready to serve, to serve. But I tend to like to make it a little bit cuter looking, so I'm gonna show you how to present this with a little bit of flair. Hold on, let's get a little dessert plate. All right, so dessert plate, and let's put one of them in it. We are gonna use just one for now. And then uh, get your confectioner's sugar and a strainer. Well, I don't have a sifter, so this is what I use. Oh, me too. <laughs> yeah, and all you're gonna do is, see, make sure everything's off, cause yeah, we're pretty much, done and you know it's so interesting this is so easy this trick but it just adds a lot of visual boom okay yep. so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just sprinkle on top and i'm gonna get to show you this so that's the confectioner sugar see if that's done already and then we'll do a little bit of dark chocolate so you can get any chocolate you want I'm just gonna get this, we already have this open, and then a microplaner or a grater. Oh! Let's see, where is it? So, all we're gonna do is grate, okay? So, that's all I'm doing. Oh, that is a neat trick. And, yeah, and then what I like to do, um, except it's also optional, but I like to put something red, so for, for example, a fresh raspberry and look at this okay I'm gonna show you two ways uh, the frontal look oh. at that 
Okay, let's clean that up because that looks a little bit messy. We like to do it this way. Now, can you imagine if I had a raspberry and you have the red that pops out, it would be phenomenal looking, right? So, so that's your dessert. Beautiful um, with chocolate and confectioner. Just do that for all the other plates. And now let's plate our... Uh, now we've lost your prep too. Whoa, wait. It's okay, just, uh, okay. just start the video. There we go. All right, so dessert is done. Let's do our salad. So now we're gonna slice this and then we're just gonna lay it on, the, on, our, on our plate, our salad plate. So, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna be uh, slicing it on the diagonal, meaning it's against the grain, okay? Against the grain of the meat. Let me just show you. Um, can you see what that looks like? You, um, okay. I'm on prep. Yes. I wanna show you the grain. The grain is this way. Right. See this? So we're right. gonna do it across, right? So we're gonna do that. Now I actually read somewhere that, that not only does it look better, but it actually improves the, the, the texture or it's like it's softer oh this is perfect okay oh nice hmm. okay, so, <laughs> yes now this is for i'm gonna give you a close-up but i'll show you why i think this is great because it's now crusty uh brown on the outside and it's pink on the inside and by the way this is a natural uh flag steak it's always good to get, uh, you know, meats that are raised sustainably. So I'm not gonna cut all because as I said, we're only two people here. So we're just gonna do this, just to give you an idea of how it would look on a plate. Now remember, Asian cooking- So we want everybody the the slicing thinly, is that the idea? We want everybody slicing thinly? Yes, and I'll show you here. I'll just put it first on top of the. Yeah, meat is not a very big thing in Asia uh, as a like the way Americans eat steak. We actually have it more as a like a not decorative, but meaning it's not the main main thing. Okay, I'm just gonna show you this with the tomatoes. So now you can put your tomatoes. You can put peanuts if you want, but it's optional. So let me yes. get this plate out of the way and I'll show you how beautiful. Ties are a lover of peanuts, that's true. Okay, wait. Ah. All right. This is without the dressing yet, so I'm gonna get the dressing. Now, can you, uh, let me get the overhead. Okay. Wow. Here, do you see how pink the inside is? Oh, wow. See? Let's, wait, let's get a better view of this. Um, okay, here we go. Now put it under the light. There. Wow. See? That's without the sauce. Now, yes, feel free to add nuts or anything else, but it's beautiful as is. So that's ready. And I think that's, if you want an overview of everything, Yes. So you have so can just we, to recap, this is the Thai beef salad. Can we see you put the sauce on? Here's the oh yeah, let's put the sauce. So as I said, I don't like putting sauce unless it's gonna be used the salad. So this one is gonna be eaten, obviously. So let's put it. And you might have extra, and that's totally fine. It's gonna keep. So remember, this is your flavoring. So don't skip, but that's done. Now let's show you what it looks like with the sauce. So you wanna look at the prep? Actually, not much difference. It just looks glossier. Yes, But it has a glossier. That's, that's your Thai beef salad, my dears. That with the soup. Very good. And our, our beautiful Turon banana fritter which is, ta-da, which kind of got off-center, but there, that's <laughs> it. We have a meal. We're ready to eat. Honey, yeah. ready. <laughs>
<laughs> Would you like to say cheerio to everyone, Marlene? Yes. Okay, guys. Sorry that we went over time and for some of the technical difficulties, but you know what? We did it. We <laughs> cooked them. That's fabulous and healthy. Thank you for joining Home Chef Workshop. I'm Marlene. Over to you, Marilyn. See you next time, Marlene. And thank you everyone for joining us. I think that was a really, really exciting menu. Uh, thank you, Marlene, for that. Uh, we'll, we, I, we would like to encourage you all to practice that. Practice makes perfect. Give it your own spin. Do something personal to it. Maybe change the fruit. Use, use um, different uh, meat cuts. Play with it. Make it your own. Personalize it and have fun with it. And do send us your pictures of your finished products because we'd love to feature you and your, and your lovely cooking on our website. Do check out our resources there from food hygiene to knife skills and so forth. And, um, and uh, that's on www.homechefworkshop.com. You'll be getting our feedback email very soon, so please do send us any improvements uh, we can make on our, on our system, on our classes, and give us some suggestions for future, for future classes. We'd love to hear from you. Now, I know you're all very hungry. Have a great meal. We'll see you soon, and when we see you, do bring a friend. Bye for now. <laughs>